there was one thing that I noticed through my journey was that it didn't matter where you put me, that relationships were at the forefront of everyone's Absolutely. pain and happiness. Yeah. Right. So whether I was dealing with children or I was dealing with a CEO of an organization or, you know, the receptionist or even just a mum and a father, you know, a mum and dad, the presenting problem always came down to communication and relationships. Hey guys, welcome to the Happy Way podcast, your go-to place for all things fun, happiness, well-being, growth, trust and diversity. I am your host, Melissa Fideli, and I am here to inspire and connect everyone who chooses health and happiness so you can be your healthiest self and live life the happy way. Today, we are taking you on a love journey from dealing with a breakup to navigating the dating world all the way through to spicing up a long-term relationship. So whether you are single, nursing a broken heart or in a relationship, this episode is for you. To take us on this journey, we have love and relationship expert, Dr. Love. Hi, hey. Melissa, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> so Dr. Love is basically a modern day Cupid with an extensive list of trainings and certifications in coaching, mindfulness and social science. She knows how to help you discover love and create connections that can last a lifetime. Welcome. <laughs> That's a really cool intro. I feel oh, like I'm just about you. to grow some wings. Yes, and I know. sprinkle pixie dust on everybody. <laughs> Amazing. You basically are. Oh, that is what Absolutely. you do. You are Cupid. Yeah, I love that. I'm going to take it. Ah, good. So can you start by telling us a little bit about what it is that you do and why you actually decided to go down this path? It was quite organic, actually. Yeah. I think that's, that's really the best way mm. that things like this happen. I was in the corporate world. I dabbled in, um, you know, the education sector. Um, and I went into learning uh, psychology, actually, mm. and social sciences and around people's behavior and motivation. But I didn't actually go to university to start yep. to do that. Okay. I actually went to university to do law. Wow. And fell into the social sciences by accident and continued to pick it up. And I think what it gave me, it satisfied my curiosity around people. Yeah. And I just kept doing that and doing that. And um, like I said, went into sort of the corporate world, went into the education sector and I tried to work out, it took me a long time to work out my niche because mm. I loved everything. Yeah, I'm so passionate about so many things. Yeah. And I thought, where am I going to sit? And I love business and I did corporate and I loved that high, you know, volume of work, real high energy. Yeah. But there was one thing that I noticed through my journey was that it didn't matter where you put me, that relationships were at the forefront of everyone's Absolutely. pain and happiness, yeah. right? So yeah. whether I was dealing with children or I was dealing with a CEO of an organization or, you know, the receptionist or even just a mum and a father, you know, a mum and dad, mm. the presenting problem always came down to communication and relationships. Yeah. And I said, you know what? That is gold mm. because if I can help people in that spot where they're struggling to communicate and in relationships, then I am creating subtle change that creates massive change, Yes, right? Because it's a ripple effect. In all areas of their life. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's that saying around you are, um, you know, you are who you hang around. Yep. You know, the quality of your relationships mm -hmm. is the quality of your life. Yep. And I believe that um, yep. to my soul because I've been through that journey. You know, yeah. hang around people that aren't very good for you or invite people that aren't on, you know, the same vibrational level as you or having the same values. Very much you can become derailed. Yep. It's just unfortunate that we're growing up. Some We don't choose who we grow up with. We don't choose mm -hmm. who our family is. We don't choose our generational history. And we need to navigate that as ad as adults yeah. or stay victim, right? So there's a lot of work in that space, but it organically happened where I just had couples presenting themselves to me over and over again. And this mm. is when I was, you know, just helping individuals. I was in a, a general practice and I was just helping individuals. And I thought, wow, all these couples are presenting to me. And I will say to you, that was the 
best lesson in my life around yeah. relationships is when I started to see couples present themselves with their normal. Mm. Because I will tell you, coming from a European background, mm -hmm. their normal was not my, not my normal. Mm. And I had this massive epiphany, like this whole shift around shit. You know, we have like been putting relationships and people and expectations in a box. Yeah. And I just, it just organically grew. So I just kept seeing couples and then I kept seeing individuals that were struggling in relationships. And now I see people that are struggling in relationships in businesses, in families, in parenting, you name it. Because wow. relationships are relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm here. <laughs> Amazing. Incredible. You're so right though, because, you know, whether you're at work or with friends or whatever it is, if something is going wrong in your relationship or you're struggling in that as aspect, it does roll out and affect other areas of your life. And it's like, you need to work on that area. And it's, of course, it's not the be all and end all, but it does play such a pivotal role in everything. Absolutely. Yeah. But you even think about having a relationship mm. at work with a colleague. Yes. You could yeah. be great at your job, mm. passionate about it. Yeah. But once the relationship and the communication breakdown happens in that environment, you start to not want to be there. Absolutely. You start to avoid being at work. Your you know, performance probably declines because you're not so focused because you're caught up in the relationship yeah. of that colleague, right? Yeah. And so this is where I say relationships are important everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Not just romantic, no. everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So as I mentioned in the intro today, I really want to take us on a journey through breakups to finding love. So to get started, can you give us your relationship expert advice on how to get through a breakup? breakup, sorry, and what are the do's and don'ts? This is obviously a very difficult time. So how do yeah. we make it that little bit easier? You know, every breakup is unique. Yeah. You, it's not just a Band-Aid or, a, mm. you know, this is the, this is what you need to do. Everyone's going to deal with it very differently. Yeah. You've got amical breakups. You've got someone that's been cheated on. You've got yeah. some betrayal. It really depends on your situation. Yeah. Yeah. But I, what I will say is the do's is to ultimately look after yourself first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you are coming out of a breakup and you're going, oh my gosh, how do I feel right now? I, I don't want to get out of bed. I feel awful. I don't want to see anyone. I'm embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I really want you to reflect on, is that the best place for me to be right now? And some of us need to sit in those feelings. You can't yeah. avoid them, right? Yeah. But it's, what would you tell your best friend to do? Mm. Okay, so treat yourself like your best friend okay. coming out of a relationship like that. The other thing you can do is really take the time to heal. Yeah. A lot of people want to rush yes. a breakup. Get they go, you know, yeah, yeah, just get over yeah. it. It's like, no, yeah. because yeah. you can say, just get over it to yourself, but you know, you're not. It's like the pink elephants in the room. Exactly. You're actually not going to get over it no. like that. So really sit with those feelings. And yeah. I've said this a few times and on a few um, media outings that I've been, you know, I've been invited to, it's sit with a feeling and I know it's shit because you want to avoid it. Yeah feels so crappy that you're like, I don't like feeling this way. But if you can sit in it yeah. and accept that's how you feel, you know it's not going to creep up on you later. Yeah. Okay. So it's the it's the feelings that you sweep under the carpet that actually show up in your next relationships. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. you haven't dealt with them. Mm. So what you need to do is be okay with how you feel yeah. and not go out and look for someone to replace that or feel, fill up that feeling yeah. of something's missing because then you're going into a whole different area of toxic relationships, right? Or codependency yeah. mm. is I can't heal myself. I can't get through these emotions. If I have someone else that distracts me, if I have someone else that can take away the pain, I won't yeah. feel it. But the pain's still there because when that person that comes in that sort of distracts you it's masking. You put a Band-Aid yeah. and then when that person decides to go, the Band-Aid starts to come off and you go, mm. hang on a minute, that wound is still there. Yeah. And okay. you probably feel 10 times worse than you did the first time because yeah. now you're also dealing Double with Double whammy, this. right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So look after yourself. Yeah. Take some time to heal. Reconnect with relationships that you may not have you know, nourished while you were in the relationship. So mm -hmm. friendships, family, you know, making sure you're putting some effort in other relationships because they're yeah. just as important. Mm -hmm. What you find is that sometimes in a relationship, 
depending on your attachment style, you can get get caught up in giving that person a lot of yourself, Mm -hmm. which is fine. But there's some boundaries around that. But you tend to forget a piece of of who you are, the other relationships that you have in your life. So really going back and going, where else can I invest some time in relationships Mm -hmm. that are quite, that are special to me? Yeah. Okay. And become your own best friend. Yeah. That's that self-talk of mm. what would I say if my friend asked me this question? Mm. What would I say to her or what what would I say to him? Yeah. Okay. They're all the do's. Yeah. Now the don'ts mm. are don't run back to your ex or stalk them or drive past their house <laughs> or make prank calls because you just want to know what they're doing or you just want to be close or you want to ring their best friend. Stop. Mm. because you are torturing yourself. Yeah. Okay. It's really tempting to know, have they moved on? What are they doing with their time? Because you are so focused on them. You know what you're doing with your time, obsessing over them, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. But, so you want to know what they're doing are with they their doing time. they doing the same? Right. <laughs> but driving past their house yeah. and seeing their vehicle parked at the, the front of their home doesn't really give you any answers apart no. from their vehicles parked at the front yeah. of their home. Because yeah. really, my vehicle's at the front of my home every day and I jump yeah. in an Uber. Yeah. So it really doesn't give you any information, no. right? It just, I don't know, it's almost like a fake sense of, oh, he's oh, home. He's home, he's sad, he's probably crying over me right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and if you see a two cars, it's like, yeah. who's the other who's car? The other I'm going to wait at yeah. the front to see if that's a girl or if that's a guy and see if they're walking out. Like, it's just to- it's just torture. That's torture, right? absolutely. So stop. Yeah. I don't want you to stalk them. I don't want you running back because it feels uncomfortable. It's really tempting, but it's really, the best thing to do is to cut off all ties mm. if you feel like you can't manage the breakup in a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah. The less you know, the better. Mm. Okay. Absolutely. So that's the first thing. The second thing is be distracted. That's okay. Yeah. Throw yourself into something that you enjoy. Yeah. But be distracted because it, I'd rather you be distracted with something that's healthy than be distracted and obsessed with him and mm. chasing him or her un, in an unhealthy way. Mm. Right. So, Go to the gym, you know, start to get obsessed with nurturing and nourishing yourself. Start to look at, you know, plan a holiday and start yeah. to be obsessed in how do I get to that place? Yeah. And a holiday is a bit weird at the moment. But, I know, you but know, just to get a little getaway yeah, somewhere. A staycation, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, staycation. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, so do, do those things that mm. distract you from the breakup, okay? Yeah. It's going to feel uncomfortable, okay? Yeah. And I will say that blame is not going to be healthy. Mm-mm. Okay. So you can blame others. You can blame your ex. You can blame, you know, your family for interfering. You can blame your stepdad that did the wrong thing to you when you were five. Yeah. You can definitely put blame on others. And yes, they're contributing factors to how you do relationships right now. But as an adult, we have an opportunity to take responsibility for how we interact with our relationships as an adult, right? Yeah. So blaming is not going to put you in the driver's no. seat of your life. No. It's not going to put you in a position of control. So when you start to blame, you put your healing process and the process of, you know, getting over your partner in their hands. Mm. You're like, I'll put this in your hands. And because I'm blaming you, you're responsible. Yeah. Rather than I'm responsible for me to go through this part of the journey, yeah. albeit it feels crap. Yeah. Right. So yes, it it feels awful. If you start to blame, you will start to create feelings of resentment. Yeah. And when you create feelings of resentment, it only hurts you in the long run. Yeah. It doesn't hurt them, no. especially when they've moved moving on and you're watching that. Yeah. Right. So your resentment. And I've been in positions, even myself, because mm-hmm. obviously this has been a journey for me. I think everyone sort of goes Absolutely. through something yeah. like this where you feel a bit resentful and mm-hmm. you blame someone for how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, it blew my body out. Yeah. Like I was holding on to resentment. I yeah. my hormones went all all over the place. Mm-hmm. I started to, you know, I'll eat less, but put on weight. Yeah. I started to be Holding tired. Holding on to everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. the resentment, you know, energetically, it's like, I'll just hold on to yeah. this. Yeah. And so yeah. your body does the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So the, they're the do's 
and they're the don'ts. It's funny. I went through a breakup and something that I heard, I think I was on Pinterest and I saw a quote and it said, a breakup is one of the very few times in your life that you get to reinvent yourself. And I don't know what it was, but that breakup for me after seeing that was one of the most incredible times of my life because I was like, you know what? It's true. Why am I going to sit here and put all of this resentment and all of those things and stalk and everything into another person when I can put all that energy into myself and make myself feel better and be better and learn new things Mm -hmm. and all of that. And I think it's such, it actually is a special moment if you look at it in that way. I know it's hard. It's bloody hard and it hurts. Yeah. But, you know, there is little moments in there where it can be magic as well. I think you're right. So what happens in a relationship Mm. is you identify with the relationship. Yes. Like it becomes who you are. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And so when that relationship ends, mm. it's almost like you die with yeah. the relationship. Yes, yes. Which yes. then does give you an opportunity to reincarnate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at it like that, mm. it gives you another life cycle. Yes. That's who I was in that relationship. Mm. And that's fine. It served that's a purpose. Fine. Absolutely. Yeah. And they were the lessons. But through a breakup, what I call is we go into something we call um, the cocoon period. Okay. And this is where you sort of start to, you know, you might withdraw a little bit. You might be on your own a bit more. You might be in your head. You might be in your feelings. Mm. But it's the cocoon period and it's it's there where the transformation happens. That's where you reflect and you go, wow, that didn't work. Mm. Wow, I know that I can't be with someone like that. I didn't realise that my attachment style was that way inclined I didn't realize it was I was that insecure what do I need to work on absolutely and so that that period while you're in the cocoon is going to be the place where you can transform and then spread your wings out and then Mm. go fly like your little butterfly yeah amazing yeah beautiful beautiful (laughs) thank you (laughs) so once the heartbreak has settled and you're feeling like you're yourself again how do you build yourself back up post breakup and give yourself a bit of a soul maker so soul maker so we've kind of said that a little bit with nurturing yourself but yeah how do you kind of gain that confidence again so it's just like we said it's acknowledging that you are not Mm. your relationship yeah right you are somebody that participated in the relationship okay okay yeah because if we can let go of that attachment and we go hang on a minute just because that died I won't die yes Okay, yeah. so it's just acknowledging that I am not the relationship. Mm. I participated in the relationship. What did I learn from it? And this is where yeah. you do the reflection. Okay, this mm. is where you're in that cocoon where we talked about it. But some of the little things that you can do, some practical things, are, you know, spend some extra time nurturing yourself. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be anything big. Small things like having a really delicious smoothie in the morning. Yeah. Right. You know, um, creating a ritual where mm. you sit down and you make a beautiful a coffee with a beautiful, you know, nut, um, a creamer or something. Yeah. You know, just real little things that say, hey. I'm worth it. Yeah. Hey, this is what I'm going to do for myself. Mm. I'm going to honor myself for that period yeah. of time in that day. It could be meditation. It could be stretching. It could be trying a new dance class. Yeah. Anything little that can start you living life on your own terms yeah. is going to make a difference. Mm. Now, people to say, oh, you know, yeah, I, I had a coffee. Yeah, but be in the moment. Yeah. I think what happens, yes, right. I think we get so caught up in what's next, what's Mm. next, when do I heal, how do I get over it, how do I move on, that we actually are never present and we don't notice some of the good stuff that we've got. Mm. So, although the relationships ended, you still got a great job, you still got a roof over your house, you still got an opportunity to eat nourishing, yummy food, you can still go away on the weekend with a girlfriend. Like, there's still really cool things that you've got in your life and I think we forget that when we go through a breakup because like oh my god my world is come crashing down which is fair enough you're allowed to feel that Mm. but it's more what you do with it so some of the practical things yes do your five minutes of you know meditation or making your coffee start living on your own terms and start to remember 
remember the things that you truly love. Yeah. I feel like that is one thing you forget about, especially when you're in a relationship that isn't serving you Mm. and a lot of your relationship becomes chaotic. You forget what truly makes you happy. You forget about the practices you did beforehand that would make you smile. And it's like, you need to relearn that in a breakup or, or re refine that, I guess. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. If you if you have a think about it, if you've been in a relationship that's been quite codependent and you yeah. were worried about your partner walking out mm. or not pleasing them, yeah. you sort of given up everything that you've wanted mm. because you've been worried they would not be there for you. Yeah. So you've overgiven. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so when you overgive uh, you don't know how to receive, mm. okay, because obviously the other partner's a taker. Exactly, so yeah. you've given, they've taken, you don't know how to receive anymore. That also means you don't know how to receive from self. Yeah. You don't know how to nourish self. Mm. And I'm not saying nourish is in food, nourish in everything. Every what do you aspect. love to do? Did you used to dance before you met him mm. or her? Did you used to play soccer? Did you yeah. used to swim in the ocean every Sunday? What are the things that you used to do that you loved, you know, passionately that slowly through that relationship you lost touch with? Yeah. And try that. And I'll give you an example. I was at an event not long ago and one of the participants were like, I used to draw and paint. And I said, do you still do that? She's like, no way. And mm. I said, why not? She goes, because the relationship is full, not fully over. It's not over yet. And I'm like, so why are you waiting for yeah. the relationship to be over before you start painting? But she identified, she, what she did is that she thought, I can't paint because I'm unhappy in the relation in the relationship breaking mm. up. I can't paint. So when the relationship is finished, I can close that chapter. Then I can paint yeah, because then I'll wow. be happy. No, you start you start painting while you're either in the relationship or coming out of it yeah. because it makes you happy. Exactly, and that's something for you. Yeah, that's a a practice that's going to fill you up and if you're going to have a happy relationship I feel like it's very important to have your own happiness keep painting yeah and so she was waiting for that relationship to end before she went back to painting and then she was like why have I not been painting because bit of an aha moment yeah right she's identified with the relationship Mm. rather than I'm participating in it but I'm going to still be myself yeah yeah so those things they're going to be really important to do Okay, so dating nowadays involves lots of online dating profiles. Mm -hmm. So can you give us some real advice on how to conquer the online dating scene and also why it shouldn't actually be feared or looked at as a bit of a root and boot profile? (laughs) Because love can be found on there. I found my partner on there. Absolutely. All of my friends found it. But I think there was such hesitation yeah. of getting on it in the first place because it's like, oh, people only have one idea on that thing and, yeah. you know. It's it's not true. Yeah, it's not. It's not true. No. And I will say to you, I have so many clients mm. and you will be able to, you yeah. know, be a testament to this, that mm. can find healthy relationships yeah. through online dating. Mm-hmm. There are plenty of women and men that actually want a partner. Yeah. And they're in the same boat. Yeah. Where do I find them? How do I meet them? Um, online is just our world yes. and we need to accept it. It's it's now very similar to, you know, if I think about in the 50s and 60s when my parents met, you would go to a traditional, well, in my case, a traditional Italian function yeah. and <laughs> the daughter would, you know, dance with the father and the guy that was interested would say, I'll have the next dance, yes. right? <laughs> so, you know, online dating is yeah. just, you know, some is of that, that yeah. right? <laughs> to a degree. But on a different platform. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're actually having a look. You're going, you know what? That interests me. I yeah. like her. Whereas mm. in the 50s, it was like, I like the family. I like the yes. dad. She's attractive. I yeah. can do that. It's very similar. Yeah. We've got a profile. Yeah. We know where you come from. We know what you, what you we do for work. Yeah. We know how you look. We know what area in the world you live. Yeah. So it's very similar. Mm. Nothing's really changed apart from the the platform we're functioning on. Okay. okay. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So yeah, real life online. never thought of it like that. And ever. Like seriously, who can actually tell these days what's online and what's in real life? Yeah. I almost feel like I'm I living know. an Instagram story every single yes. day, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like I know everyone just through Instagram and then I realise I haven't actually met them in real Absolutely. life. Absolutely. <laughs> you see them on the street and you're like, I know you from yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, 
Oh, yeah. Instagram. Probably. And then yeah. they're like, oh, it's Instagram. I'm yeah. like, it sure is. So yeah. our, our bound, our, we're getting really blurred mm. around the lines of reality yeah. and online. Yeah. Okay? Which I'm not saying is a great thing. Mm. But what I'm saying is that, yes, relationships online can be quite fruitful, could be mm. awesome. Yeah. I think the one thing you need to do is it is be mindful of the way you project yourself yep. and what you're asking for online. Okay. And how do you go about that? So if you are not looking for a root and boot, yep. <laughs> you know, be very clear that you're actually, yeah. you're looking for a genuine connection, yep. Yep. you know, say it yep. and Straight up. don't, don't catfish. Don't pretend mm. you're someone else. Yeah. Don't put a photo that doesn't look like you. Don't um, say you do a job that you don't. Don't yeah. pretend you're a bookworm when you're not. You're yeah. a party animal. Yeah. Like don't pretend. Mm. Be authentic. Yeah. And if you can be authentic, you will find that you will start to attract authentic. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, the bookworm maybe doesn't want someone that's a party animal. Yeah. And when they come and, you know, swipe right, left or is it swipe left or I swipe right? I think it's right. swipe right. Yes. Yeah. Left is no right <laughs> yeah, is yes, yeah. right? Um, I think. Of so many of them. But, yeah. you know, when they're swiping and they go, you know, I like her. She's a bookworm. She looks yeah. great. She, you know, studied law, but she's now, you know, got her own practice. And then you meet, mm. you're not a bookworm. Mm. You party every weekend yeah. and then you're wondering why, how does a relation, how is, there's no one out there for me. Yes. Of course there isn't. Yes. Of course there isn't yeah. because you're, you're actually fishing in the wrong pond. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wrong bait. You're not being yourself. Yeah. yeah. Wrong bait. Yeah. And I don't know if you found that as well, but mm. in your journey when you were sort of meeting your partner, did you find you just put it out there and this is who I am? Absolutely. When I went mm. on a dating app, I was, I didn't really put too much into it. I was just kind of like, you know what, just going to be Absolutely. myself. I kind yep. of in, I don't know, I don't know what the nice way is to say this, but I took the piss a little bit as in I was just like, I'm going to say what I want and yep. have fun and yep. be genuine. Yep. And I actually found my partner. And that's why. <laughs> and that's why. And like yep. him and I are so alike on many levels yep. and like we've got a very similar sense of humour and, yep. you know, and I wouldn't have found that if I was just like, oh, my God, I've got to be, you know, this perfect little yep. thing that I think men want. Want. Yep. It's just like no, you know, who knows that not one man wants one woman. Like every man wants no. a different kind of person, yeah. you know. And it's just be yourself, and you will actually find you will and the I person that's right for you. I know for me, there is a generation, and you know, it's the fifties and above, yeah. or the forty, mm. you know, forties and above. Are like, I don't do online dating. Yeah. But why? Why not? You know, and they have this idea that it is. It's just a mm. sex romp. Yes. It's just like, oh, they just want one thing. Yeah. And I'm really having to educate them mm. around what these platforms can offer women yeah. like that. Yeah. Because where are they going to get to know somebody mm. in a bar as intimately as you can yes. online? It's And you know what? I was single for a while and every time I was single – you didn't go to a bar and buy it. Guys didn't come up to you. They don't want to buy drinks. Like, I don't know, my generation anyway. They don't well, they bloody they they buy drinks. Yeah, they don't want to, they don't want to, like, you know, but guys just go out and they do their thing. Yeah. And I feel like if they see a group of girls, maybe they're too intimidated to come up to you and then they'll slide into your DMs later. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like dating is now online and meeting someone in a bar, especially my generation, yeah. it's just, it doesn't really happen like that well, unless you're introduced through mutual friends. Yes, I right. just think it's very, very rare that that actually happens like I have actually got dms from guys where they've been like I saw I was at the same bar as you but I didn't want to come up to you so um I just thought I'd message you instead and it's just like well that's online dating you know yeah, like that is. is a full prime example and that is not even being yeah. on a dating app that's no. even Instagram yes. is being used as a dating Abs app right Instagram Const is another yeah. dating app I, I feel I do <laughs> you know it is another I think it is because you'll tag yeah. yourself somewhere yeah. or a girlfriend will tag you yeah. and they'll be like there she is yes. and they'll go into your dm and right. I'll right. find you. Yeah, right. exactly. I agree. You know, what happens is that being online, you get to sort of be a bit more niche. -y. You get to mm. align with the people, yeah. your people. Yes. Right? Absolutely. You can't yep. do that in a bar. No. Like they don't stop entry for people that don't believe in the same thing. Exactly. You know, or don't have the same yes. the same yep. values yep. or morals. Yep. No. Like everyone's in there. But what yep. you find is with online dating is that – you can actually sift through that stuff. Yes. Okay. Get yeah. to know them. You can get to know a little. It's a little bit like a blind date. Yeah. You know, do they speed dating? You get to know them really quickly. Really quickly. And then if yeah. you sort of get, 
you know, quite quickly online, yes. you know what, this conversation's not going anywhere. Yeah. I don't really like him. And mm. a lot of people struggle with confrontation. So if you mm. had to not like someone face to face, sometimes people stay in those relationships yeah. for longer because they don't like to confront them or make someone feel bad. Yes. Right? Whereas but online, you you've can got do the ability to yeah. go, you know what, yeah. nice talking to you, but this isn't for me. Yeah. It's, you know, not like them or, yeah. you know, get yeah. them off your list or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. So I think there's some real good value in mm. online dating. And I would say – Get curious. Mm. It's not about finding the one. Yes. This yeah. is where people get stuck. Yes. They go out on a at a at a bar. Yeah. I'm looking for the one. They're on the hunt. Yeah. Right? Or they go online, yeah. they go, I'm on the hunt. Yeah. If you are on the hunt, you are definitely missing target. Yeah. Right? For you sure. are because you don't know what you're looking for. Mm-mm. So how can you hunt for something yeah. that you have no clue what you're hunting for? Yes. Like what's the target? Yeah. yeah. So at least online, you're the. It gives you an ability to mm. go. I sort of know that that's what I want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and get curious. Get really curious. Rather than hunting for the one, you're going. I want to know about you. Yes. Tell me a bit about yeah. you. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. Really start to understand people. It's yes. almost like a little bit of a people experiment. Let me I let agree. me understand. Yeah. I want. And if if it doesn't work out, like you're a good mate. Yeah. And you know what? If you can't have a conversation through an app you can't have a conversation in real life so yeah, you know right. yeah. I feel like that's another big point like tick okay yeah. I can actually have a conversation with you yeah oh this is I'm really struggling here yeah. you know and it's... it comes back to what we we're saying in the beginning yeah communication when I was going through my journey and when yeah. I was going where what's the most mm. the most beneficial thing that I can see happening for people and it's the way they communicate in their relationships yeah okay. yeah so that's going to be a standout and people are learning how to communicate online too. It's a I little agree. bit of a different lingo, but yeah. we can make it work. We can make it work. Da- yeah. Online dating is good, guys. Yep. I am proof of Hands that. Up. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so let's chat red flags. When dating, it is easy, so easy to get caught up in all the fun and the romance and like this flashy new person. But what are big red flags that we should be looking out for? Because you tend to miss these at the start and then they come up when it's a bit, not yep. too late, but you're kind of in knees deep, I guess. It's a hindsight it's a, thing, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. But I will say to you, red flags are hidden mm. but are also in plain sight that we miss yep. them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so they are there. Yeah, they're right there. And we, we choose not to see yes. them because we want a relationship yeah. or we're worried this isn't the one yeah. or I'll be lonely mm. or, you know, he's cute or we have great sex, Yeah. right? So they're yeah. all the things that sort of happen and we sort of ignore the red flags yes. okay so one of the biggest red flags I tell people to look for is when you are talking to somebody and you've been talking to them for a while mm. even if it's a couple of weeks or months and they turn around and say to you I don't put label on labels on things oh, gosh. <laughs> right everything in our world has a label yeah you walk in a shopping mall, it has a label. Yeah. You walk, you open your car, it has a label. Yeah. My laptop has a label, Yeah. right? So do relationships. Yeah. So the ones that don't put labels on things is their excuse to not be in a relationship. No commitment. Yeah. Right? So that's the first thing. So if you mm. are wondering what is this and the person you're with says, I don't want to put a label on this, you know they're not going to commit. Yeah. Okay, and it's unfortunate because we hear this a lot, a lot through um, relationships because they want to be have it, you know, have their cake and eat it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's the first thing. So another one is they keep cancelling their plans or flaking out on you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you make plans and at the last minute, sorry, work came up or mm. sorry, I'm, um, you know, something came up with my family or I'm, tra- I had to travel for work, and it's not just once. It keeps occurring. And for me, that's a red flag because you're not a priority. No. Right? If you make a plan, you stick to it. Because what that does is that if you sit there and you are allowing these this person in your life to keep flaking on you or cancelling, it starts to interfere with trust. Yes. And you start yeah. to lose trust for him or mm. her. And that you don't realize it because it's mm. like, oh, he just canceled plans. Oh, he yeah. just canceled. Oh, he did it again. But it seeps into the relationship. And I feel like it would seep into your self-worth as yes, well. 
absolutely. You know, you'd feel shit every time. You do. Why every... did you cancel again? Yep. I, would, I bought a new outfit for this. Yep. Got my hair done. Yep. You know? And then we start to self-talk and go, oh, that's okay, but he's busy. We mm. start to make, make excuses, excuses, right? Yep. Excuses for them mm-hmm. because we don't want to be single or we don't yeah. want to be lonely mm. or we are reliant on somebody else to fill us up so obviously then if you are making excuses for shitty behavior yeah. i question your self-worth anyway yeah right absolutely so flaking you know not wanting to put a label on it another one that comes up quite often is they don't want to be seen in public or on social media with you mm. What are they hiding? Mm. Like, because they're on social media anyway, and they posted yesterday with their mates. So why wouldn't they say, hey, I'm out with it for a coffee yeah. with a beautiful woman. Yeah. You know, like, look what I'm doing. Look what it look. Yeah. This great like, chick. Celebrate. I'm so proud of her. Right. Like, you celebrate. Know? And you are nowhere to be seen. Mm. Red flag. Either he's got somebody else, probably, yeah. most definitely has somebody else. Yeah. Or has quite a few people and wants to mm. keep the options open. And I say he, I should never say he, it's he or her. He or so her. when I yeah. say he, yeah. I'm talking about he or her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to be general. I'm not generalizing <laughs> yeah. you because yeah. it no. happens to both sexes, yeah. right? Yeah. Definitely if they don't want to be seen with you or you haven't been, you've been with each other for six, seven, eight months mm. and you haven't met the family and there's like a family gathering and you're still not going or you haven't, you know, gone to a Christmas, you've been together for two years, like that's alarm bells. Yeah. Like how many excuses can you make, you know, I don't want you there because the kids don't know I've moved on. Mm. Are you still sort of with the ex-wife? Yeah. And is it yeah. an ex-wife? Like mm. what's going on? So th- those are the things I would say, you know what? Red flags. Really trust your instincts here. You already know it. Yeah. And I feel like that's the biggest thing. We usually always know and then you go through like a year or six yep. months or three months and then you're like, I bloody knew it the whole time, right. you know? And like, like well, if you knew yeah. it, why would you do yeah. it? It's yeah. almost like going, right, the oven's yeah. on or the stove's yeah. on and you see the element that's red and you touch it. Yeah. But you know you're going to yeah. get burnt. So yeah. why would you do it? I know. It's, right? It's so scary. It's, and it, it could be quite... It, it's sometimes a pattern, mm. like someone can present with this pattern of yeah. I I am used to being burnt mm. and I will choose situations that keep getting me burnt even mm. if I don't like it. Yeah. Right? So, so there's some yeah. work to do for there's those work. people, right? Yeah. Right. But I would say definitely trust your gut. The red flag in itself, you will know. Yeah. And if you're making excuses for it, you also need to make a decision to exit left. Yeah. 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 You're setting yourself up to get really, um, really hurt. Really hurt. Yeah. So how do you spot and stop a narcissist in their tracks? Because it's, I mean, there's a lot of different qualities that make up a narcissist, right? Yeah. Some brilliant qualities. Yes. Yeah. So like, how do you work with that? Like, how do you spot that? Oh my God. You know, narcissists are are brilliant when you Mm. meet them. They're just lovable and have great conversation and the suave and, you know. Put in all the effort. Yeah. And even, you know, in a group situation or scenario, a narcissist is really loved by a lot of people. Yeah. It's only when you get intimate with them that it starts mm. to really impact you. Okay. And when I say intimate, it doesn't mean in only intimate relationships. It could be your direct report at work or it could be a yeah. parent. It's only when you've got those connections. Mm. But if you were just social, they're the life of the party, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when you're starting to get intimate with them on a different level, that's when it really does impact you. You can't stop a narcissist. Yeah. You can definitely spot them. And step away. Right, <laughs> right. So this is where... Because they're so good at manipulating Mm. people, right, into thinking that we are in this situation because it's your fault. Yeah. If you didn't do this, this wouldn't have happened. They are good at gaslighting. They are good at telling you you're overreacting. Mm. You know, a a situation that came up the other day, Buck Snight was quite drunk, the groom, and the strippers were in – the room with them and he got quite sexual with one yeah and his family members were there and her family members were there and he has turned around and said it's a buck's night stop overreacting it's never going to happen again no No. you know boundaries have been crossed no there's no excuse yeah Yeah. so you don't and i've said this before you don't accidentally fall into somebody's vagina no (laughs) 
<laughs> it was an accident. Like, it's your oh, fault. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. I just landed in there yeah. and I didn't mean it. I don't it. know how that right. happened. Right. <laughs> so you don't accidentally fall no, it, right? No. It, it, it takes the intention. It takes yeah. some action on your behalf. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And if you can unzip yourself, undress yourself and be with another person and, well, you're not incapacitated, no. right? Yeah. There's some functioning there. Exactly. So no excuse. But that was just an example. So, yeah. yes, they are very good at telling you you're overreacting and that's mm-hmm. what that example was showing is that, you know, he wants to turn around and say you're overreacting. You know, if you weren't so uptight about this stuff and a bit more looser, you know, we wouldn't be fighting. If you were cooler. Yeah. If you were like the other girls. Yeah. What is yeah. going No, sorry. They are also very good. So what happens in that conversation, they are very good at making you feel guilty. Mm because it's your fault you feel like shit i broke this relationship ended because of me and then Mm. i get people presenting with me saying you know maybe if i did this he would have stayed or maybe if i did that she would have stayed maybe i was too maybe i loved him too much what what is that Like, what do you mean you loved him too much so yeah they are great at guilt tripping you yeah right so stopping them isn't – you can't do that. But what you can do is stop yourself from interacting with a narcissist. Mm. And so when you see those things, when you're starting to feel this is all my fault, I I don't have any control here, uh, there's nothing I can do to make this better or change it, like you know then, hang on a minute, this looks like I'm being gaslighted and what I think and feel doesn't matter – because he keeps devaluing or she keeps yeah. devaluing what I'm feeling or what I'm going through. That's your ticket out. Yeah. That doesn't change. No. You can, you'll can you become a shell of a person and that still won't change their behaviour mm. because what they'll do is that you'll have nothing left and they'll just move on to the next victim. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, oh, you're not shiny and flashy like you were at the start. Yeah. Ah, I'll yeah. move on somewhere Or, else. you know, you're so – Yeah. You're in a place of helplessness, yeah. almost in the corner like a ball, like nothing mm. left, mm. that you're a shell, just a shell of a person. Soul's yeah. gone, you know, emotions have gone flat, not experiencing life, don't even know who you are and they're like bored. Yeah. You know, I need someone else to get my hands on yeah. and then make them like you because yeah. then I can do the next one, right? So when you start to see that there's a part of you dissipating Mm. going somewhere when you start to see the signs that it doesn't matter what you say you're always being unrealistic or unreasonable they're they're really good red flags really good indications that you're with someone that probably doesn't have much empathy for you or what you're about to go through and probably step away as much as it hurts it's very difficult to recover from a narcissist because you actually genuinely loved them yeah and you get so caught up into their web that when you are finished with that relationship, you are so spent that you don't know how to navigate your way out because there's nothing left in you. Yeah. Yeah. So get some help if you need some help through that. Yeah, or even absolutely. if you're starting to notice it, yeah. if you're in the relationship and mm. you're noticing I'm being gaslighted all the time, I need to bounce off someone to work out if I'm going crazy because this yes. is what I get. They go, I feel like I'm you going crazy. Yourself. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 So go see someone. Outside yeah. the relationship, mm. away from family, away yeah. from friends, that is got a blank slate and say, mm. I need to bounce this off you. Yeah. This is what's going on. Give me a professional opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So you have found the one and you are happy and all loved up and enjoying the honeymoon stage of a relationship. But how do you create boundaries for yourself and your partner so you can have a long-term successful relationship? It's really easy to get swept up and lose ourselves a little, you know, through the process. So how do we stay grounded? You know, the honeymoon the honeymoon phase doesn't last forever. No. But you can definitely have periods of the honeymoon phase yeah. in your relationship. Yeah. Okay. And they're little things. It might be when you even argue and you have makeup sex, mm-hmm. right? It feels like, oh, I, that this was is great. Nice. This yeah. is nice, right? <laughs> and and this is what a healthy relationship does. It's like yeah. don't avoid the arguments. Mm. The arguments need to happen. But, you know, when you work through the ar- argument, it's almost like that connection again and you go through the feelings that you mm. had while you were in your honeymoon. Yeah. So, yeah, the honeymoon period ends, but you can introduce things into your life mm. and into your relationship that replicate that. Yeah. You know, have your date nights. Don't forget to say I love you. One of my 
all time things that everyone needs to do is you need to hug for five seconds and minimum a day. Oh, okay. Okay, Aww. get the endorphins yeah. going. Really just hug and be present in the hug. And yeah. that doesn't cost anything. No. It's like, I love you, I appreciate. And five seconds of a hug is actually yeah. quite long. Yeah, wow. So you try it, Melissa. Okay, well, I'll try And then get back yeah. to it. <laughs> I'll let you know I how want you, yeah, <laughs> I want you to try it because if you – usually a hug's quite quick. Yeah. But if you just sit there and just hug and be present – Every single day, whether it's morning when you leave or when they get back from work or when you get back from work, mm. it's just acknowledging their presence that's yeah. going to be really – so a hug does enormous things wow. for a relationship and it's just simple. Such a simple little thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those little things, yeah. complimenting each other. You know, mm. don't don't sit there and roll your eyes. Be present. Yeah. You might not like what they're saying, mm. but it's really important to be there and be present through that mm. and then have your time to talk. This is yep. how I'm feeling about that. I appreciate yep. that. So communication is going to keep the honeymoon spark alive for longer. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's only when the communication starts to break down mm. and our relationship stops being a priority that we stop experiencing those times. Okay. Okay. Yep. So even I get this with parents, right? They go, we've had kids, you know, intimacies out the window. Yep. We're not connecting. I would say, yes, being a mother mm. or being a father is a priority. Your relationship is the first priority. Yeah. Your relationship is like the oxygen that comes out of a plane and comes on you yeah. first. Yeah. Adults first, children second. Yeah. Because if you guys have enough oxygen as the parents and you guys are filling each other up, you've got enough to disperse, right? Yeah. And so that's what you need to think. You need yeah. to think. Oxygen first for us as a couple, mm. and then everything else gets what's left. Yeah, okay. does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. definitely can keep having those relationship uh, honeymoon periods as mm. long as you create them. Don't expect to go into a relationship and just sit there and for them to fall on your lap and go, "Oh, this is a honeymoon period." Yeah. Like it doesn't yeah. happen no. happen to you. Yeah, you need to make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Priority in your relationship, it needs to be a priority and you need to be open to maybe new experiences. Mm. Yeah. You know, have a plan. Do we want to try, what do we want to try new this year? Yeah. What do we want to give a go? Do we, we haven't cooked. Do we want to learn how to cook? Yeah. Do we want to learn a language? Mm. Do we want to do these 10 countries in the next 10 years? Yeah. Like get excited with each other. Mm. Make plans. Yeah. Set yeah. some goals. Yeah. Yeah. And, I and, like that, that. and that's really important, yeah. right? So when you're per with a person that mm. is, creating plans future plans that is really important because then you're feeling like oh we're committed yeah we actually you feel secure in that relationship yeah, absolutely yeah because yeah. that's another red flag yeah. right if you're not making mm. future plans if they're not saying oh well, let's do this in two months you're starting to feel insecure what is this yeah yeah, yeah. so it's making those future plans with mm. your partner making sure they know they're acknowledged they you care about them yeah. you won't carry them you don't carry their emotions. You don't carry the the burden of them, but you're there to no. catch them when they fall and help them fill themselves up. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But you create those moments. Don't expect mm. them to happen. Okay. So much goodness in this episode. I'm <laughs> loving it. So before we finish up today, what is a final piece of advice you would like to give someone who has given up on finding love? No. <laughs> <laughs> I will say there is always someone for someone. Mm -hmm. There will always be someone out there for you. Yeah. And I would also say don't allow your past experiences, whether it's the family you grew up in, mm -hmm. the relationships you've had along your way, dictate the relationships you have in your future. Yeah. Because it doesn't have to be that way. If you can spend some time reflecting on how you did relationships, you can determine then how you need to do relationships. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. A bit of self-reflection. Yeah. Yeah. But giving up on love takes more energy than finding love. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because you are lying to yourself if you mm. don't want to be loved. Yeah. You really are. That is another pink elephant in the room. You are pretending yeah. you don't want a relationship. You are pretending you don't want to be loved. You are pretending you don't want to love. Mm -hmm. It's not true. You get busy. Yeah, you 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 climb the corporate ladder. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You make lots of money. Yeah. But you're still lonely. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering what's missing. You think, what's missing? I'll buy a new Ferrari. Yeah. 
I want to buy a new holiday house, but yeah. something's still missing, right? So I will say definitely don't give up on love because when you give up on love, you give up on a piece of yourself. Wow. Love it. So good. <laughs> <laughs> so where can our listeners follow you? How can they book in to see you? You're going to have couples everywhere trying to be like, hi, oh, where Go do they it. find you? Well, I see couples, singles, actually yeah. a lot of singles at the moment coming yeah, through going, wow. how do I How do I do that? How do yeah. I reflect and mm-hmm. how do I do relationships different? Okay. So they can yeah. find me at on Instagram, of yep. course, at yep. Dr. Dr. Dot. L-U-R-V-E. Yeah. And I've got my website, www.drlove.com. Um, and obviously got the podcast um, yeah. that's on Spotify and, you know, Apple. Uh, that's called Between the Sheets with Dr. Love. I'm going to be listening to yes. that on the drive home tonight. Yes. So <laughs> lots of little episodes there. But, yeah, they can reach me on any of those platforms. Happy to – I'm pretty good. I yeah. try to be good to get back to everyone. Amazing. Yeah. That was such a great episode. I loved it. There oh, was good. so much good stuff in there. So, yes, thank you so much for your time thank today. You it was incredible, me. of yeah, course. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you guys so much for listening and I hope you have taken even just one piece of wisdom from this episode that you can apply to your life to help you grow and be a happier and healthier version of you. Please like, subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and make sure to share us on your socials. Sending lots of love to you all. Bye.